Now in this video we will now uh, look at uh, types of inflation uh, demand pull and cost push, uh, cost push inflation sorry uh, demand pull inflation as you could notice is related or associated with aggregate demand in the economy that basically increase in aggregate demand pulls the inflation or the price levels up now cost push inflation basically is associated with costs of uh, raw materials costs of production or production costs basically and cost push inflation could be one off or continuing continues as well uh, or continuing cost push inflation as well in the sense that the costs in the economy or the production costs of the economy grows continuously that leads to the uh, growth in the prices and as a result aggregate supply curve contracting or shifts to the left uh, the analysis that is going to be looked at next will be uh, similar to what you have done in the microeconomy level remember the uh, aggregate uh, sorry supply and demand curves of uh, firms and industries so we will just use this uh, concepts again but in this uh, instance we'll be look will be uh, considering an economy-wide uh, supply and demand curve uh, analysis or in, in example then in the end we'll also look at the interaction of demand pool and cost push inflation at the same time okay let's look at this demand pool inflation first now um, this is uh, this curve here aggregate supply of the whole economy so output at a given aggregate price level is Q1 so that's the equilibrium in the economy so on the y-axis you have the price level so let's assume this is probably a well you can assume this is a GDP deflator you could also assume this is CPI RPI index yeah so P1 is the price level and uh, at, the, at the equilibrium level of Q1 national output so this is the real output and you also have the AD curve uh, aggregate demand curve now if let's say that the uh, for some reason the economy uh, accelerates growth e accelerates in the economy in the sense that uh, there is a more demand than before for uh, uh, domestically produced goods as a result well how do we if you remember from last uh, last week's uh, videos how do we uh, or what 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 are the reasons for AAD to shift so in general ad shifts if there is an economy-wide uh, acceleration or the growth taking place but what what are the sort of underlying causes of this growth now let's break it down so ad is equal to uh, consumption c plus investment so private investment i plus government expenditure g plus expert demand so these four components change uh, in 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 in, econ in in boom times or in growth periods, so this is what what pushes the aggregate demand upwards. In other words, demand pushes up. So consumption is basically household demand, represents household demand, the purchase of goods and services produced domestically by households. And I is the investment expenditure. In other words, the demand for uh, capital goods, basically produced domestically. The the hospitals for sorry not hospitals if it's private yes fine but usually we we associate in private investment with uh, building uh, warehouses factories investing in capital stock inventory things like this yeah so if there is this a uh, demand for investment investment in in, uh, in in the economy that may change as well and also government may spend uh, in, in in public projects for example yeah extra cash that may increase the aggregate demand and also there may be demand from outside for uh, or from abroad for our goods and services domestically made goods and services this will also push up the aggregate demand curve so the only time that aggregate demand curve or the doesn't shift is when the prices change when the prices change the the quantity demanded or quantity national output will will basically change along the curve but if the one of the components of ad changes then we will see that sort of shift outwards so if there's a positive change in any of these four components what's what happens with the demand increasing the aggregate demand curve shifts to to the right and that uh, leads to the rise in the prices so in the whole economy the, the in the economy wide prices will increase and firms basically as a result 
they produce in response they produce more so how much does it will increase it really depends on the firm's uh, firm's planning and expectations of future inflation and demand so that's uh, that's as you can see the rise from p1 to p2 in the economy is is actually creating that inflation so that if you if we want to calculate the inflation rate now you take the calculator and and do this p2 minus p1 over p1 times 100 so that's what we've done in the in the class last time yeah so that is the inflation rate the, the, the difference here divided by the original price will give us inflation rate so that's uh, an example of demand pull inflation now an example of cost, uh, cost push inflation this is a difficult one for me i'm trying i'm trying hard to not to make this blunders in spelling them or pronouncing these words but it turns out that i, I cannot manage it Oh, all right, so we'll start with the original equilibrium. Let's assume that for some reason there is an aggregate supply shift to the left, and uh, then the equilibrium now moves to a new point. Oops, uh, I moved one step ahead. So that push moves the what you can see is here that it make uh, reduces the output, reduces the output, and increases the increases the price from p1 to p2 now this is natural isn't it when there are li there is little output or the, uh, out if there is uh, uh, small amounts of goods in this this is i'm going back to the micro level if you remember as the as the production declines the prices rise because they, there is not enough of the goods um, let's go back again you might say oh the prices were rising again when there was a more product yes this is this is fine either too it's just in this case there is more demand so uh, co companies produce try to produce more to catch up with that demand but in at the same time they actually increase the prices because they know that they can sell at a higher price because of demand now in this case however the oops i'm going backwards so i'm gonna wait move forward now Boom. right so in this instance for example it's the the costs are rising uh because of uh what you call this uh, cutback in production now the cutback in production happens if well and also remember let's let's go back well, i think i'm jumping as well um this as2 this new new curve is is the result of a cost push cost push uh, uh, uh factors or external factors it's not the result of inflation itself but it's because of inflation well it's partly because of inflation as well because costs are now higher than before so what happens is that prices must rise as a result to produce a unit of the same good the companies might now charge higher prices because of the costs increasing so that leads to this as curve to go backwards because the prices are higher now and the demand itself not changing at all because we're holding on to the demand curve uh, demand as as we'll assume that this is uh, constant for now we we don't see any ex acceleration in the economy it's just external shocks to the to the economy made the costs of production more expensive so in the absence of demand uh, change in demand what happens is that price rises usually uh, 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 induce production cuts now what is causing the aggregate supply shift to the right and in increase the price levels uh, partly because possibly wages rise maybe trade union strong trade union negotiates with the companies in the economy to to pay higher wages or greater wages than uh, what the company could afford without rising the prices for example and also it could also be external oil shocks for example oil price rises will basically affect especially the oil uh, deficient economies uh, or the oil supply that the economies where there is no oil basically they have to import for example turkey imports most of its oil from outside um, so if oil price rises affect its economy badly japan the same a lot of economies in europe basically do not have energy for example russian gas it supplies basically most of eco economies in the in, in eu so as a result uh, europe is a result russia has this sort of political power uh, the uh, it's like a monopoly in the market that it can charge any price but so it, russia can play political games as well anyway that's a bit of digression political aspects of the economic theory but but you probably now by now understood that the costs push the aggregate supply curve uh, over the prices up and uh, with the right high prices there will be less demand assuming that demand doesn't change at all i mean in the sense that there is no extra spending 
so the quantity of output or the GDP will then decline and this happened in the 70s when there was this uh, co cost, uh, cost of oil increase and then output started declining and that's exactly what happened for about five years the economy went down but and it also caused the inflation remember the inflation rate uh, in the last video we saw that in the 70s there was a huge inflation rate this is this is the case here that uh, that the aggregate supply curve contracted, the output declined, and this also increased. Also, it also depends on the firms how much they can sort of uh, maintain. I mean, without raising the price of maintain output without raising the price, but even inevitably they will have to pass the costs on to the customers. So, so high prices pass on to the economy, eventually raising the prices. So the the extent of rise here really depends on the company's profit margins or how much they would like to make uh, out of this uh, sort of uh, economic uh, situation, the situation that they're facing. Now, the, the, the cost push inflation could be one off as well. You remember, I, I think I mentioned it in the first slide, that it could be one off, like the rise, run off rise in the costs and then inflation stabilizes, the price level stabilizes and then they start from the, where they continue on the new equilibrium level so it could be one of so for example taxes increasing one one time increase in taxes and nothing changes afterwards that leads to just one of rising the costs for example the like aggregate supply just shifts once but it could also be the case that uh, the uh, aggregate supply continues uh, or the costs could continue rising that may in the end increase the uh, continuously uh, shift the aggregate supply to the left over time this is a this is a difficult case and this is uh, usually because of external factors not internal factors or maybe the policy pol incorrect policy implementations as well in the economy right this could also happen into demand as well and in the previous video we talked about one shift on demand but it could also increase shift could also continue uh, moving or the demand curve might cont could continue con continue moving to the right if the economy keeps growing this happened basically between 2002 and 2007 until the uh, the property bubble and then the financial crisis so there was an aggregate demand shift continuously but suddenly at very high prices it wasn't possible to afford houses and it wasn't possible to continue affording high wages you know so as a result it's just uh, the economy just collapsed eventually now uh, we have so far looked at the uh, case of uh, holding one of one of the curves constant while moving the other, shifting the, considering the shift in the others. But it's also possible that both of these uh, curves change at the same time. For example, um, aggregate supply curve could interact with the aggregate demand curve, and that's plausible case easily. For example, let's say that there was an aggregate supply shift initially and that's followed by aggregate demand shift and as you can see what happened is that uh, the output stays the same it's just prices keep rising uh, so there's enough output but then at a higher price now if it was just simply a aggregate supply shift this new equilibrium would have a lower price of course but then lower amount of goods as well in the economy but because of uh, countermeasures by the uh, central banks or the government, we maintain the same um, output level, but then we, our prices rise. This could happen because, for example, maybe there is a sort of external shock to the economy, and that shifted the economy's uh, supply curve to the left, reducing the output. And this is a case of, you know, this could bring about a recessionary uh, period uh, or the start of recessions then fearing this governments might stimulate the economy by for example increasing uh, government expenditure or something called something we call now quantitative easing for example um, the the bank of england is doing quantitative easing to shift aggregate demand to the right in response to aggregate supply shifting backwards during the recession that plausibly bring the prices up back to the high level but then economy continues producing just enough for example yeah at the, at the original level in that case so aggregate supply shifts can be contracted by aggregate demand shifts by for example spending on uh, cross rail for example yeah providing employment to people a lot of people or spending on the bridges in, in over the famous uh, river Thames, or many other ways of doing uh, basically stimulus uh, was in injecting stimulus into the economy 
that the governments can use yeah this could continue on, on on until some sort of at some level the economy settles on equilibrium level yeah it could be this level but as you can see this 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 has a drastically or the negative effect on the prices because you know if ag you don't want aggregate supply curve decline continuously and then what happens is that if the aggregate supply curve keeps going to the right like in this case uh, if it keeps going rightwards, for example, if AD AD st st stays here and then aggregate supply goes to red and then green without AD moving, what happens is that prices are rising and output is declining. Output when declines when the factors of production, labor, capital are not employed at, at the sufficient level. So that means unemployment would have increased. Yeah. So this would result in a great recession. But to keep up with the uh, with this uh, sort of negative effects or contract or compensate for this negative, effect, you, the governments usually take in, uh, uh, take undertake a, a contract contractive or um, what do you call this uh, compensating measures uh, to to balance the economy so that the unemployment doesn't rise. Unemployment rising implies a, gr a great expenditure. Uh, social transfers or benefits will increase unemployment benefits. So these money could be spent on something else like projects. Yeah. All right. So that's it for now. Uh, we will see uh, you in the next video.